All right, just a couple of quick comments about STAR. Um, uh, just some terminology. Try to get you should try to get familiar with these concepts if you're talking to oncologists and rad oncs. You've got to understand what consolidative therapy is. People give systemic chemo, they have a couple oligo metastases, few mets, and you're gonna provide consolidative therapy on that one or two or three vertebral bodies. So you gotta get familiar with the term consolidation. Use the word local control. Um, cure means you know no cancer anywhere. Um, so local control, again, oligometastatic disease, understand what that means, and then use the term NED, no evidence of disease. So if you have somebody with one or two METs and you burn them and there's no evidence of tumor there afterwards, you'd say to the medical oncologist, I have rendered that person NED, and that predicts a really good outcome. I get CT prior to every STAR case for sure. Most of my cases, almost all of them, are in IR. Cone beam CT is interesting. It's rarely needed, honestly, if you can triangulate from the cross-sectional imaging, or you do it in CT with CT fluoro. Biopsy and treat, that's key. That's how you get non-small cell lung cancer to stage 1A. That's how you treat small renal cell cancers. You say, wait, let's not do the biopsy until I've talked to the patient about therapy, and I can do it all in one setting. So we use that same principle, again, for small lung masses, for small renal cell masses. Um, combine biopsy with treatment, take the time to do that and you'll grow, your, you'll grow your work. And then don't forget there's a company out there that makes a bone drill. That's really important. If you haven't used or heard of this bone drill company, go back, find it. It's a great way to get into blastic metastases. Um, okay, so I'm gonna skip through um, these folks. That's a little bit of pre-treatment planning. Uh, moving around on this guy, let's see. Uh, great filling of the cement before and or of the fracture line before and after. Okay, follow up MRI. Uh, okay. Uh, how many can you treat? I've treated nine, but three in one setting at a time. I wanted this woman to tell me where do you hurt the worst? I went in, treated three levels where we're on physical fluoroscopic physical exam. I treated those three levels. I made her wait for months because I didn't know if this was really working. I treated another three levels months later. She came back a year and a half later, treated another three levels. I treated her sacrum. She's now been three years without chemotherapy. She just developed a, a recurrence at one of the levels I treated, and I referred her to the rad onc because I can't help her anymore. So um, I would never. Is that sacroplasty or universal? It is. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, starting uh, to, what, January of last year, I think. Yep. Uh, okay, so this, uh, this is the case I want to talk about. I think, so this is where. Uh, kyphoplasty and STAR has become, this is where it's evolved in our practice. Our patients and our families are now call, calling this a simple injection. They go to their rad op and they say, hey, I stopped in IR, I had the simple injection and now I'm here to see you. And that simple injection took away all my pain. The rad op calls me and says, what did you do? Like a ganglion block or like an epidural? I say, no, I did a STAR ablation. So that's how easy this can become. So 72-year-old female, stage four breast cancer, new severe back pain, nine out of 10, PET CT shows an avid lesion at T9 with 70% loss of height. Referred to the rad onc on Thursday for consultation and simulation. He called me that day, referred to IR the same day as the initial visit to the rad onc. So the rad onc called me. The very next day, Friday, I saw the person in clinic for a consultation. Looked at all the imaging, explained everything. Monday morning, the person shows up. The plan is to start SVRT and chemotherapy Monday afternoon. So on her way to radiation therapy and chemo, she stopped in our department Monday morning and underwent what she called a simple injection that was actually targeted RFA with STAR under conscious sedation. The total sedation time was 30 minutes. Skin to skin time was 25 minutes. She was discharged at 12 noon, um, really recovering from her anesthetic with a pain score of three out of 10. She stopped for lunch at Denny's she went to her uh, radiation oncologist who did SBRT at three at one o'clock. She had chemo at two. She was home by dinner. So for me, this is kind of the ideal scenario of where star ablation can fit in to the entire treatment algorithm. Of course, we went on to treat with radiation, but she needed an immediate pain management procedure because she had a nine out of 10 pain. She wasn't going to lay on the, on the gantry and on the table for two hours as they resimmed her and treated her. But with the pain control as, as well as it was provided, she could do that. Um, this had huge relevance within this uh, uh, radiation oncology practice. This was kind of talked about to the other partners as a, like an, oh my gosh, what a, what a simple thing to do. And this is what I hope to do more of 
um, in the future. So again, there's the PET scan, bright on a really bad uh, kind of lateral view. Um, we're going in, you know, the osteotome, directing it wherever we want. We're getting really nice, um, here, here's the uh, probe extended. We're getting pretty nice filling with cement. This is not the typical distribution of cement. Usually it's much more heterogeneous than that. Um, that kind of looks more like a, a kyphoplasty for osteoporosis. Um, I think kind of less is more, unlike kyphoplasty where I'm always pushing to do more and more cement and doing everything I can to get more cement in. After a star ablation, for me, I know I'm gonna get a good outcome with just ablation. For me, the cement is icing on the cake. I always do it, but I don't wanna push it into places where I'm gonna injure the patient. And, and as the other speaker said, it is gonna move places that you're not predicting because it's just soft tumor and the cortex is kind of gone. So there you go, AP and lateral, and that's it. Mm -hmm.